Hey everybody, this is Dr. Prepper doing my part two of my uh, <clears throat> ham experience. Um, this is my 2 meter, 70 centimeter, 144, uh, 440, 400, whatever it is, um, antenna. It's a Diamond 30A uh, 2 meter antenna. And I have it on about 20 foot of pole right now. Let's see. All the way down to the ground. Um, considering putting, uh, hooking up uh, ground to this. So we don't get a lot of storms here, but uh, you know, just in case. So either that or I'm gonna move it closer to the ground which is right over here and just stick it in there maybe run a couple of rods down I don't know yet uh, I want to be safe but you know like I said we, we don't get a lot of stuff here but right now I just wanted to get the pole up and get it working and I did so um, I got uh, what I got here is some fence posting sorry about all the background noise trucks are going by Got the wire hooked up. It's a 213 coax. And uh, all the way up to there. All the way up to the actual antenna. I'm going to stick another probably 8 to 10 foot on this and get it past the trees. As you can see, it's surrounded by a bunch of trees. I'm going to get it through that little hole right there of trees and uh, get it beyond the trees and I'll even get better coverage. But I, I've been getting good coverage on the repeaters and I did a little simplex yesterday after my buddy <clears throat> Will helped me hook this up. So, uh, looks like uh, I'm getting out pretty good. I got a good SWR. Uh, I think four, 147, I think I hit about 1.2 on the SWR, so it's pretty good. Saw a video yesterday by Renaissance Man. I'm going to probably get that SWR antenna analyzer. So, I want to just make sure I don't have any problems and uh, catch them before I do, so. I'll go in and show you how the radio works out. My new 7900. But, so, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back inside now. Um, this is a, uh, a Yezu um, 7900. Um, I got this one from Europe, just like uh, Renaissance Man. And I love this radio, man. It's a 50 watt radio, and on this repeater right here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little right about, oh, I don't know. Let's see, where's my finger? There it is. Oh, oh, there's my finger. Right about there below the one. I have it on a, the medium uh, one setting right now, which is the next one below high, um, which is, uh, well, when I key up, I'm getting out about, I think it's about, uh, five watts or something like that um, so I'm getting out really good and really clear on the through the repeater so um, it's pretty good it comes with five, four settings you know low 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 power which is like five watts and then medium two which is like I think uh, I don't know 10 watts or 15 watts all the way up to uh, 50 watts which is high um, so it's better to, you know, broadcast as low as you can, you know, it's just, that's what the FCC asks, asks you to do, so they recommend that. And it works really good on, uh, on the medium setting. Um, yesterday, uh, after I got it all hooked up, my buddy Will, who helped me, he came over and helped me hook up my antenna. <clears throat> he, we, him and I did a simplex. He lives about, oh, probably 15, maybe 20 miles away. And uh, we were able to simplex pretty good. I, I wasn't getting out that great. I had it on high power. And the reason is, I think at this point, is my antenna surrounded by all those trees. I think once I get it above those trees, I'll be able to simplex for a while. And for you those of those who don't know what simplex is, that's just going, uh, you know, radio to radio. You're not going through the repeater. So, And you want to have uh, some simplex um, conversations going on just just in case those repeaters go down you'll be able to 
talk to somebody straight. And we got about three or four um, set re uh, simplex stations that we use here in the valley. So works pretty good. Um, so like I said, once I get that antenna above those trees, hopefully I'll get some really good uh, simplex connections. So. Uh, and then down here I want to show you my power supply. You need a power supply because these are actually uh, uh, mobile radios, but I'm going to use it for my base right now. Okay, that's an Astron uh, 25 watt or amp, 25 amp um, uh, power supply. And the uh, good thing about this power supply, it's got a battery backup uh, connection so you hook your batteries up, it trickle charges your batteries, and if that thing, if the power goes out, it reverts to the battery power. I haven't used it yet, but uh, I'm going to get a nice little battery and and try it out, but it's uh, got a volt meter and an amp meter, and so I think I said watts earlier, but actually it was 4 amps I'm putting out on that power. So I'm new to this, so bear with my, my uh, rookiness. But it's a cool little uh, amp. It wasn't too expensive, you know, hundred and I can't remember. I'll get you the the prices of everything. But um, this is just the next step in in your amateur radio, you know, usage on a budget. I guess this is the greatest way to say it. Um, <clears throat> I started off like you know, you saw my other video. I hope if not, I'll link it. But uh, I started off with the handheld uh, Woshan. And uh, that that worked real well on uh, the repeaters. I could get out to all the repeaters locally, and uh, with clear signal, everybody loved it. it. If you check out the video, you'll see I'm talking to somebody in San Diego through the repeater. And uh, so this is basically the next step. Uh, the the complete package I got for the Woshan, the hand handheld was under two hundred dollars if you go back in the video you'll see it's everything i bought antenna uh the radio you know i bought a little extra stuff but just to get out you, you know you're talking less than a, than two hundred dollars to start hamming okay this is the next step where um we're, we push it up to 50 watts from five watts on the handheld so we push this up this radio pushes up to 50 watts and it's just the next progression to uh, to hamming. So um, if I if I were like I am new, I, I think I'm doing it the right way. I, I believe so because to buy a HF receiver, high frequency to get a you know go cross country or cross the world, you know those radios, <clears throat> they're you know the I think the cheapest one I've ever seen was around 750 up to three or four grand, right? You can get a nice uh, Yazoo Yazoo for you know nine hundred dollars, thousand bucks. But then you got the antenna and you know everything else that goes with it, the the, the uh, antenna tuner, and you know you could spend a lot of money. So um, I think the best thing to do if you want to get on the radio and get practicing and make sure it's something you want to do is you start off like I am, just start off small, get used to it. Okay, I like this. Uh, let's go to the next step, and that's what I've done. I went to the next step and get got myself a mobile radio. Which is a lot of still good power, 50 watts, and uh, and uh, this package I put together here. The radio itself was about 350, and you add in the coax, uh, another 50 bucks for for 50 foot of uh, 213 coax with the connector, so that's another 50 bucks. So that's 400. Then the antenna was like 40 dollars or 60 dollars. Again, I'll get the prices down there and uh so now we're we're pushing towards 500 and you know this uh power supply down here was probably another 100 and something i think so you know now you're getting into the six figures i mean the 600 dollar range okay and you know now you're at the next level so you still haven't spent that thousand dollars on that hf receiver or dual band receiver or something that you're interested in so uh and here's what my thought is on this I have the HT. I'm going to pass that off to my wife. She's going to get her license. I'm going to pass that off to her and her. she can use it in her car. I got a little mag mount antenna just for that HT and I'll have her carry the Slim Jim with her just in case she has to get out of the car and start walking or something. 
Uh, she'll always have the rubber ducky, but that that uh, that uh, Slim Jim gets a lot better signal. So, so what I'm going to do, pass it on to her, and then once I decide to get a maybe a dual band radio or an HF with a you know two meters or something added, um, um, then I'll put this mobile radio in either her car or my car, depending on how we want to work it out. But as I'm not going to, I'm not doing this stupidly where I'm just buying a bunch of equipment that's going to be laying around. I, I, I'm progressing up to where I can still utilize the equipment. So, you know, I ultimately would like to get my son a handheld so he can contact me in San Diego. If the shit hits the fan, he'll be able to contact me all the way across um, the mountain from here to San Diego. And I can find out what's going on with him and make sure he gets over here safely or he's okay and everything's okay over there. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to buy a bunch of useless equipment that's just going to be sitting around in my garage or some some crap, you know, my man cave. So, I'm trying to do it smart. Um, so, that's where I'm at with this. You know, I think I, I push somewhere around $600. And again, I'll get all the prices down for you so you can see, kind of get an idea of how much this stuff costs. Um, this is not a cheap hobby, but um, if you're willing to, you know, if you just wanted to get, spend 200 bucks and get that, the, the um, HT, you know, the handheld, then, you know, you're, you're perfectly good with that because you can hit the repeaters and you could do some local simplex, maybe five miles away or 10 miles away. I haven't really done a lot of simplex on it yet, but um, it's good for locally. And like I said, you can hit the repeaters and just start practicing and having a good time meeting new people, and that's what I've done with my with my handy talkie. So, um, but at this point, I, I want a little more power. I want to be able to get a couple more repeaters out there that I know that are out there, and do some more simplex c contacting and and maybe some emergency stuff if if it comes up. You know, get involved in that. So, um, but let's go ahead and uh, key this baby up and see if we can make contact with somebody. Um, just so you can get an idea of what it sounds like and hopefully I'll be able to get a hold of my friend Sean he has a 7900 too in his Jeep and hopefully he'll be uh, he'll be out there so let's give it a shot KJ6 TFJ KJ6 TTM copy KJ6 TFJ out there, Sean. It's KJ6 TTM. Let's give him a minute. He might be in the house or something. Otherwise, we'll try somebody else. <clears throat> uh, no contact. KJ6 TTM. Um, KJ6 TTM, anyone out there uh, got my signal? <laughs> it's odd, this repeater is usually real busy, but... Hey, how's it going, man? I, uh, just testing out this 7900 I'm doing a YouTube video on it uh, you're on the YouTube video right now um, just wanted to get out there see if you can uh, if you're catching me sounds good you're clear I don't hear any steady uh, roger that thanks a lot man KJ6 TTM I'm standing by alright KJ6 clear. okay so there you go that sounded really good he came in real clear um, I actually think that's, I can't remember his call sign, but I think this guy, that's the guy who lives down the street, so, but that doesn't matter, because this is going through a repeater, if him and I did simplex, you'd be able to, to, uh, to, uh, hear it, so, I probably should get back there and ask him, but this video is going to get too long, um, but there you go, it's very clear radio, excellent radio, um, didn't spend a lot of money on it. Not, not relatively speaking, I didn't spend a lot of money on it. It's good quality stuff. You know, it's a Yezu, and um, I, I'm learning so much about these radios and, and all this stuff. So the really good thing about it is, 
the the learning curve it's fun you know you learn a lot of good stuff and my my buddy will came over yesterday uh and taught me a lot of stuff i didn't know so i'm still a rookie and i'm still bubbling over on the radio with blabber but i'm um, getting a little better and uh, having a lot of fun so i highly recommend this this setup if if you're on a budget um there's all kinds of different combinations of radios out there you know um you can get icoms and kenwoods and it goes on for days okay um uh, these little japanese radios are pretty good and <clears throat> i'm pretty happy with this this yezu um i think my next purchase when i start getting uh into it's going to be high frequency i may go with a dual band or something not sure i'm doing you know i don't like to just jump into stuff i like to do a little research on it first so i'm not sure exactly how i want to approach this um, but it would be nice to be able to go hf and and talk to some people across the country and uh, across the world but again it's incredibly expensive um if you don't have a, a you know, we're all trying to prep for food and stuff like that, so trying to buy stuff like this is not really in the budget, but uh, maybe someday I'll uh, upgrade and I'll do a video on that. So, anyway, that's my video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope that it gave you some ideas on what to do, and, uh, um, you know, I highly encourage everybody to get at least your ham license, your tech license, and get a radio, the cheap, you know, try to get the $200 package that I showed you. Um, get on the radio, man, because communication is going to be huge. You know, we talk about food, we talk about water, we talk about guns, we talk about um, security and everything. But, you know, without communications, you're kind of lost. So uh, when the communication systems kind of get start getting funky, it'll be nice to have radios. And, again, these things are all off-grid. You know, you don't have to, um, especially these, these mobiles are off-grid. You don't have to have power. So, um, you know, you don't have to have AC power. You can run them on DC. So... As a matter of fact, that's all they run on is DC. So, anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch y'all later. Uh, Dr. Prepper out. God bless you all.